let us take the discussion further for solo model, which we were discussing yesterday. So we said this, we started with this kind of production function. <clears throat> Our production function was y equals to k to the power alpha, a to the power one minus alpha. And let's say zero is alpha is less than one. Zero is less than alpha is less than one. Alpha is any constant. We know that L is the labor which is employed. W is the wage rate per unit of labor. So WL is the total wage bill. WL upon Y. would be the share of wages in total output, right? Similarly, K is the capital which is employed. R is the per unit capital. total rental bill. Rk upon y is a share of rent in total output. Right? Okay. Guys, you remember now we did this we said this that MPL is equal to one minus alpha into Y by L. And this is equal to the wage rate. We said this that MPK is equal to del Y by del K, which is equal to alpha Y by K. And that is equal to the rental rate. We did this yesterday. So don't uh, forget this. Huh? So let me just copy this for you because I'll be using it here. We did this thing and let me also copy this thing here. So I'm not in hurry in doing things. So you also, whenever you make notes, no? you have to make notes with uh, utmost uh, as if you have all the time in the world then you understand because these are these lectures are not meant for any kind of entertainment jaldi jaldi ho jai. it is nothing like that so go slow every time anyways so you have you said this that mpl is equal to the wage rate and mpl was equal to this you also said this so what is w into l 1 minus alpha y by l into L. So that is 1 minus alpha into Y. And what is W into L by Y? Just divided by Y. So you're left out with only 1 minus alpha. So 1 minus alpha is nothing but the share of wages in the total output. Right. Similarly, here del y by del k is alpha y by k. Del y by del k is the MPK that is equal to alpha y by k. We said this that this MPK is equal to the rental rate. Uh, so we can write this this way. What is RK is alpha y by k into k that is equal to alpha y. And what is RK upon Y? That is one. So that is alpha. So share of rent in the total output is alpha. This was your production function. Right? This was your production function. And uh, alpha is the share of, you can say, rent in the total output or share of capital in the total output. And 1 minus alpha is the share of wages or share of labor in the total output. Right? So 
what you want to say by this is that the factor shares are constant. This is the factor share. Factor shares are constant. This is the factor share of labor. This is the factor share of capital. Hmm? This is the factor share of labor and capital. Okay. Now, if I want to convert this uh, production function, which I have in the intensive form of the production function, then how, how I can do that. So intensive form means the per capita output. production function in intensive form intensive form or in the per capita output form or uh, output per labor form output per worker form these are the different names output per worker or output per capita right output per worker output per capita like this so what is output per worker capital y by l and which we denote as small y which we denote as small y. And beta, what is capital Y? K to the power alpha, L to the power one minus alpha upon this L here. So what is this? This is nothing but K by L to the power alpha. And this is nothing but small k to the power alpha. So you have output per capita is small k to the power alpha, right small k to the power alpha small guys this is nothing but capital uh, per labor right or capital labor ratio right or capital per worker this is capital per worker this is capital per worker. So this is the production function in the intensive form, right? And you have also assumed that zero is less than alpha is less than one. How does it look like? Okay. One. If small k is zero, then small y is zero to the power alpha, which is zero means Production function is passing through origin, first thing. Right. Or you want to write this more technically intensive form. Production function is passing through origin, one thing. That's a second thing. What is d small y by d small k? Alpha small k to the power alpha minus one. Beta alpha is positive, and alpha means alpha is greater than zero. Alpha is less than one, so alpha minus one is also positive. So k to the power this thing, this is positive, right? So it means this is an increasing function. This is an increasing function.
d2 y by dk2 would be alpha into alpha minus 1 k to the power alpha minus 1 minus 1. So this would be alpha into alpha minus 1, right, into k to the power alpha minus 2. Beta alpha minus 1 would be negative, no? Alpha is less than 1. So alpha minus 1 would be negative. Alpha is positive. So this guy is negative. So if the second derivative is negative, so you have the concave function. Hmm? You have the concave function. One thing. So if I just want to put this on the graph, small k here, small y here, leave the function like this. This is small y equals to small k to the power alpha, something like this. So this is a concave function, right? When it is passing through origin, it is an increasing function. And this is a concave function, one thing, right? So yes, if you add more capital, so if capital is going to increase, means capital labor ratio is going to increase, means you will be able to produce more output per worker. That is for sure. This is given by d small y by d small k. So, beta, if k is going to increase, k by l is going to increase, assuming that there is no change in the labor. Small k is going to increase. Small y is increasing for sure. So that is what is meant by the first one, uh, second one. But the increase in output per worker within every increase in capital per worker, that is going to be diminishing. You've done this, right? In your micro course also, you've done this, that the marginal product of inputs is positive, but it is diminishing, right? So diminishing marginal product. So, so please write with more capital, Per worker means now every worker has more capital given to him. So he'll be able to produce more output also. Every worker will be able to produce more output. Forms produce more output per worker right but there are diminishing returns to the capital per worker so each additional unit of capital per worker is going to add less and less addition to the output per worker this is what you do in case of your marginal product also you remember that huh? you say that marginal product of labor is positive but if you keep on increasing this labor, then marginal product of labor will keep on falling. Marginal product of labor itself is positive. So you definitely need an input which has the marginal product positive because otherwise why will you use that input? It's whose marginal product is zero or whose marginal product is negative. I mean, that is not a profitable input then. So, and that is not profitable to use such an input in case of the marginal product is going to be negative. But the increase in marginal product as labor is going to increase, that is going to fall. So that is what diminishing marginal product is. So for example, you there is a fixed amount of land and you keep on increasing the amount of labor in that land. So every unit, every additional unit of labor will be adding less and less to the output. That is what is meant by the diminishing marginal product of labor. And in terms of capital per worker, what you are saying is this, however, There are diminishing returns
to capital per worker. So each additional unit of capital per worker is going to add less and less amount of uh, addition to the output per worker. That's an idea. Uh, so you have this thing. So I'll talk about the second equation of the solo model in the next class, which is your capital accumulation equation. Right? Sure. Thank you, Vita.